Hi, kids. This is Jack Brinkman, and you're about to listen to an amazing adventure. Before we start, you need to know that portions of the story may be intense for younger listeners. So, if you're under the age of 10, make sure your parents are listening with you. And now, I hope you enjoy this special presentation of The Brinkman Adventures. Bob, the left tank is getting low, and I need to transfer fuel from the right tank. I want to review the procedure in the operating manual. It's in my briefcase behind the back seat. Could you ask someone to pass the briefcase up? Sure. Hey, back there! Could someone pass up the pilot's briefcase? It's next to the back seat. Dave! Did you grab that briefcase next to you? I think he's sleeping. I'll grab it. Just a sec. Here you go, Barb. Thanks. Up to you, Bob. Got it. Thanks. You're welcome. Dad! Look at the water down there. We must be thousands of feet up, and you can still see the white caps. You're right. You can see the pattern of the waves. The wind must be coming from that direction. It looks like steel. See where the sky meets the ocean? You can't really tell where one starts and the other stops. It's almost smoky. Yeah, they sometimes call it the Smoky Sea. Michelle, you're such a blessing to us. I'm so glad I got to do this with you. Thanks for bringing me along, Dad. I wonder how Mom and the other six are doing right now. The little ones are probably heading to bed. I'm guessing Uncle Jonathan had them on some crazy adventure. It was so hard to leave them. I know. Did you see Gracie? She was crying when we got on the plane. I didn't think three-year-olds understood things like that. Was I that smart when I was her age? Nope. Dad! (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) What's going on up front? Bob and the pilot keep tapping those round gauges. Those are the fuel gauges. It looks like we're running a bit low. We should be fine. If you look out ahead, you can see the mainland. We're almost across. Uh, Dad, I I think that engine on my side just stopped. Look, the propeller's barely spinning. We're still over water. This can't be good. Yeah, this is a little scary. The other engine's running fine, though. We can make it the rest of the way on one engine. Anchorage Center, this is 6 Sierra Foxtrot on 133.3. Level 6 here, Foxtrot, go ahead. The fuel indicators were apparently off. We've run out of fuel on one tank and are descending now towards Sledge Island. I'm not sure how much fuel I've got left in the other one. November 6 here, Foxtrot, Roger, you're killing an emergency at this time? Uh, I believe I will. Right now, 6 here, Foxtrot, say type of uh, correction, say uh, souls on board. Seven. What did he just say? I think he's declaring an emergency. Dad, did you hear that? Our pilot's calling in just to be safe. The other engine's running fine. Why don't we pray? Father, help our pilot make good decisions and keep the other engine running strong. Keep us safe, Father. Oh no. Dave, wake up! We've lost our engines! Dad, I'm scared. Anchorage Center, our fuel just went out. Understand your fuel has gone out of this time and you're descending into uh, where at this time? Uh, we're about two miles short of Sledge Island. Folks, we may need to make an emergency landing. Dave, what do we do? People, we gotta pray like never before. Oh God, no, please, no, I don't wanna die. I'm only a kid. I wanna grow up and get married someday. Lord, this is exactly what I was afraid would happen. You knew my fears, why this? Why God, this doesn't seem fair. Please God, please God, show a miracle and start that engine. Dad, we're getting closer to the water. The waves look so big. Michelle. If we crash in the water, we're going to hit hard. You need to brace yourself like this. Look at me. As soon as we hit, we need to get out of the plane fast. Even if you're hurt, get out. Do you understand this? Yeah, Dad. Just remember, honey, I love you. I've always loved you, and God loves you. Don't ever forget that, no matter what happens. Daddy, I love you too. Give me your hand. You're listening to the very first episode of The Brinkman Adventures, an exciting new family audio drama. Jack Brinkman serves as music pastor in a church just north of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His lovely wife, Susan, homeschools their seven children, ranging in age from 1 to 16 years. How did Jack and his oldest daughter, Michelle, get into this scary situation? To find out, let's join the family two weeks earlier. Good morning, family. It's time for devotions. Susan, are you coming? We're all waiting. I'll be right there. I'm looking for Charlie. 
kids, do you all have your Bibles? Yep. Yes. Uh, I can't find mine. I think I left it at church. Uh-huh. It's in the lost and found. Then why didn't you grab it? Am I my sister's Bible keeper? Kate, look on with Ian and find your Bible this week at church, please. Here, Charlie, you sit with your sister, Kitri. <laughs> Scooch over, make room for Mom. Okay, everybody, turn to Matthew 6.20. Michelle, why don't you read it for us? Okay. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break in nor steal. What do you guys think Jesus means by this? Mm, I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know. Ian, what do you think? It means my things are going to break and people will take them. Yes, it does. Good job. Yes, I see that wildly waving hand. Kate, what do you think? We should put our money in heaven. It'll be safer there. <laughs> How can we put money in heaven? Put it in one of Ian's rockets and shoot it off? <laughs> <laughs> it means that we should do things that last for eternity. Because that lasts forever. Excellent. What things should we do? Uh, help people or tell them about Jesus? That's right, Michelle. Hey, it's Mr. Bill the Mailman. Hi, Mr. Bill. Hello, Isaac. Here's your mail today. Is your mom and dad home? Hi, William. Good morning, madam. I have a certified letter for you today. Sign here, please. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Cheerio. This looks important, Jack. It's from the Ziegler's Insurance Company on Kodiak Island. Could this be what I think it is? Quick, open it. No way! Look at this! What? How many zeros are after that number? Five zeros! Uh, what? what is it? What is it? We're, We're rich! rich. What? <laughs> Who gave us this money? Well, remember I told you that someday we might receive money because of the accident in Alaska? This is it! Oh, cool! Oh, wow. oh, yeah! That's awesome! How much is it? Did you think it would be so much? No, in fact, I wondered if we'd ever be paid. This is truly a blessing. We always talked about what we'd do if this money ever arrived. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so. <laughs> this is going to be fun. The kids, you all go into the kitchen and give us a couple of minutes to talk alone. We'll call you back in and then we'll finish up. Okay. Yes, Dad. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for being patient. To start off... I think we should thank God for this incredible, unexpected gift. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this financial gift. We didn't expect this much money, but we are very grateful. Thank you for blessing us beyond our needs. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, now here's the plan. First, we're going to give some of this money to God. In the Bible, the farmers would give him the first fruit they harvested. We do that by giving him 10% of what we earn or are given. We'll also give a portion of this money to our government. That's called taxes. And then we'll pay off our home loan. The Bible says, owe no man anything but to love one another. Therefore, we plan to get out of debt. After that, we'll put some in savings. When all this is done, we still have a lot left. We're going to call that discretionary money. I like to call it party money. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Brinkman, would you like to tell the kids what they have won? Sure, dear. Each of you kids gets up to $7,000 to spend on whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Michelle, you're the oldest, so we'll start with you. Do you have any idea how you'll spend your money? I'm going to buy that 66 Mustang convertible oh. sitting on Sockville Row. Girl, you have class for a 16-year-old. Uh -huh. Okay, Kate, you're next. Actually, Susanna would have been next. What do you think she would have bought? Oh, well, she loved singing. I bet she would want vocal lessons. I loved her singing. I can still remember her voice, even though I was little when she died. Yeah. Kate, thanks for remembering Susanna. It's been six years, and, well, we all miss her, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are we ready to go on? Yeah. Okay. So, Kate. What would you get? I'm going to get my bass guitar and amp. <laughs> cool. Kitri, what do you want? I want a pet pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I love pigs. They're cute and smart, too. Yes, pigs are very smart, just like you, Kitri. Okay, Ian, you're next. I want to put my money in the offering plate at church. Wow. Ian. Ian, uh, the uh, little pastor. 
Are you sure you want to put all of it in the offering? Yep. Well, maybe you should put some of it in the offering and then take some of it and buy something you want. Um, I really want to put it in the offering. Is that okay? Ian, I think that's cool of you. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, Isaac, you're next. What are you going to buy? A Ferrari. A real one? <laughs> I don't think you can get a Ferrari for 7000 Oh, I want a pedal one. <laughs> oh. Ew, okay. Gracie, what are you going to buy? A puppy. Aww. Aww. Oh, nice. uh, and baby Charlie will get a lifetime supply of his favorite food. Raspberries. Raspberries, right. <laughs> Susan, how about you? Well, I want a maid for a year. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dad? Well, I'm going to buy a nice van so we're comfortable on our next road trip. And guess what? Starting tomorrow, guys, I'm on vacation for a while. We'll have a few busy days of buying... And hiring. And then on Friday, to celebrate, we'll go to the snake pit and eat some pizza and play some <laughs> oh, video games. Yay! yay! I love that place. How many tokens do I get? As many as you can use. Awesome! Ian, Mom and Dad are already outside. They're waiting for us. Kate, I got to the 20th level, and I have like 50 extra guys. I can't quit. Ian, everyone's waiting. Dad said come right away. Okay, I have to go to the bathroom, though. The handle on my game had some sticky stuff on it, and now it's all over my fingers. Tell Dad I'll be right there. Okay, see you out there. Ian's in the bathroom. He'll be right out. Oh, wow. What happened to the van door? Very funny, jokester. I'm serious. Come over here and look. Oh, no. You've got to be kidding. You're right. I can't believe this. Look at that dent. I have a rusty old van that never gets hit. Then I buy a new one and wham! You did get around to getting insurance on the van, right? No! So okay, Michelle. I'll run a couple of errands and be right back. Are you okay watching Isaac? Sure, Dad. Let's go in, Isaac. Hi. You called earlier and said you were done checking over my Mustang? I'll tell the mechanic you're here. You can take a seat in the waiting area. Why are we here, Michelle? So, you know I bought a Mustang, right? Yeah. Well, I brought it here because the engine wasn't running. The car doctor's looking at it now. He'll tell me what's wrong. Oh, Foley's a nice one, though. I don't think so, Isaac. Furries are faster, Michelle. They're red, too. Your car isn't red. It's blue, right? That's right. You should paint red. That's what I like. Would you like it as much as your new pedal Ferrari? I'm sick of it. Sick of it? But you've only had it for a couple of days. Hey there, young lady. I got some real bad news about your Mustang. What's wrong? Well, the engine's running rough because it's shot. Oh, no! Yep, that clicking you heard wasn't the lifter like we thought. It's a rod knocking. And we pop the oil pan, check the bearings, and they're all shot. You need a total overhaul or a whole new engine. Oh, I can't believe it. Michelle, want to buy my Ferrari? Come here, little Wilbur Piggy. You're such a cutie pie. I made you a Piggy shirt and Piggy pants. Let's put them on you so you look nice. I don't think Wilbur likes wearing pants. And what are you guys doing in the tree fort? Why'd you tie a rope to his back legs? Wilbur's going for a ride down the slide. See? I tied the rope to his legs so he won't go down too fast. Okay, Wilbur, get ready. I'll give you a little push. Don't be scared, sweetie. Wilbur, go down the slide. Let yourself go. Mommy has you. He doesn't like it, Kittry. Here, Ian, catch the rope. Good. Now give it a pull. Bye-bye, Wilbur. Catch him, Ian. Gotcha, little pig. I'm coming down. Whee! Good, Piggy. You went down the slide all by yourself. Good boy. Okay, give your mommy a kiss. Ah, Ian, he's biting me. He won't let go. Pull him off. Oh, your nose has teeth marks on it, Kitty. Mommy, it's mommy. You're a bad little pig. It's so nice to get away together. 
Thanks for the spontaneous date, honey. Mm, you're welcome. I love sitting here on this bluff. Hey, look down there. There are seagulls playing in the wind. Well, they seem so carefree. Unlike us lately. That money seems to have made things worse at home. My maid is lazy. Wilbur bites. Gracie's puppy ran away, and Isaac is already sick of his car. Kate doesn't want to play bass anymore. Michelle's car is shot, and my van is dented. Yeah, the only one totally happy is Ian. And he gave his money away. Go figure. Remember the verse we read that morning the check came? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven? Mm. I think Ian was the only one listening. Maybe we should ask God how he wants us to use what's left of that money. Let's do that right now. Okay. Lord... We've been using this money a bit selfishly. Well, we're sorry about that. Please, show us how you want us to spend what's left. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Thanks for doing that, Jack. I love you. Yeah, I love you. It's Michelle. Uh, I hate getting calls when we're away. I always think the worst. Hello, Michelle. Mom? Yeah. Um, could you come home quick? Because... Michelle? Michelle, are you there? The phone just died. We, we better go. There's a car in the driveway. It looks like a rental car. I don't see any kids outside. Can't believe oh. it. Dave and Barb Anderson. Oh. <laughs> it's been years. I showed them my pig. Barb, it's been so long. Dave. Wow, what a great surprise. Barb and I had a concert in Milwaukee. Sorry about dropping in unexpectedly. We would have called, but we didn't have your phone number with us. I hope it's okay. Of course this is okay. It's great to see you. The kids have been entertaining us. They're looking great. Oh, yes, we're blessed. Well, why don't you two come on in the living room and sit down? Can I get either of you something to drink? I'm fine. Sure, water would be great. Hey, kids, why don't you go play outside while we visit with Mr. and Mrs. Anderson? Can I stay, Dad? Sure, that's fine. Hey, this is my kind of living room. An accordion on the piano, a Hammond organ, an acoustic guitar. Barb, here's your water. And yes, Dave, I've given up the idea of the living room, and now it's an official music room. Now, do I remember reading that you're playing the organ and piano now at church, Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> wow, Michelle. She's great. Actually, that's part of the reason we're here today. Dave, don't you want to catch up with them a bit before you just jump right in? <laughs> I know you, Dave. I figured there was more to this visit than, Hi, how have you been for the last five years? All right, go ahead. Jump right in, old friend. Well, we're in quite a bind at the moment. Oh, what's the problem? We've been working on an exciting trip to a small town called Lavrenchi on the east coast of Russia. It's about an hour's flight from Nome, Alaska. It's very isolated with no roads going in or out. Last year, some friends of ours flew their little airplane there to visit. Believe it or not, they were the first Christians to ever set foot in the town. They said the place was in a shambles. They said it looked like the town had declared war on itself and won. Broken buildings, garbage everywhere, a depressing spirit among the people. The hospital was very low on medical supplies and spiritually they were dead. How sad. Our friends had a Russian Bible with them and they gave it to a woman they met. They said she held it tightly and wept. I heard Bibles are the most sought after book in Russia. You're right, they are. We've been working on the return trip for almost a year. We have over 3,000 pounds of food that's been donated along with 1,000 pounds of medical items. We also have 300 Russian Bibles. We plan to first distribute these things and then hold some evening meetings. We'll do a concert each night and then tell them about Jesus. How exciting. It's very exciting. But the trip may need to be canceled. Why is that? We just found out our musicians can't come. Our guitar player and his wife, who plays piano, needed to cancel because of a very sick parent. I think I know where this is headed. If we don't go now, we'll have to wait until next spring because of weather. We've been on the phone calling everyone who's played with us. And then last night, I believe the Lord brought you to mind, Jack. And we just happened to be doing a concert near your house. Jack, would you prayerfully consider coming and playing guitar for us? Oh, my. This feels so crazy asking you this, but, Jack, you played for us a few years back in Alaska. You know our music. And Michelle could play piano. That sounds so fun. We would meet in Alaska, and from there we'll fly to Russia. When would we need to be in Alaska? Nine days. Nine days?
See you later. Bye. We'll Bye. be in touch. Bye. Bye. See you later. See ya. Well, that was a surprising visit. What are you thinking, Jack? I'm thinking this is absolutely nuts. There's no way. Nine days? I'm really bothered by how he sprung that on us. But could it be the Lord's doing? I mean, we were just asking him how he wants us to spend that money. Maybe it's for this. It sounds like you and Michelle are really needed. Those people have been doing fine for years without us. I just don't see the urgency. Why can't they just postpone and go in the spring? Honey, why don't you sit down and I'll, I'll get some lemonade and we can talk. Thanks, son. Lord, you know my heart. I want to serve you here and be a good leader, but I'm scared. I haven't gotten over the accident in the Bering Sea. We would need to cross it twice in a little plane. Are you asking me to risk those waters again and with Michelle? Dad, can I sit down? Sure, sweetie. It sounds like those people really need help. I was thinking, we have a comfortable new van and extra money. Lemonade, anyone? Mm. No. Jack, we've been talking about making a trip back up to Alaska. Your sister and brother-in-law live in Homer, and the kids and I could stay with them. They'd love the company. Our cousin Caleb would have a blast with the kids. It's six days of solid driving from here to Alaska. We'd have to be packed and on the road in three days. Impossible. We did it when we visited the Schultzes in North Carolina. And traveling 4,000 miles with three kids under the age of five, do you honestly think we'd keep our sanity? I can help with that, Dad. I just don't like the idea. <laughs> You're usually the adventurous one. I would have thought you'd be packing already. What's bothering you, hon? I'm embarrassed to say it, but uh, I'm scared. I thought you liked flying. I do, but I hate the water, especially that water. I don't even want to fly over it. Oh, it's the accident. I'm sorry, dear. I'm getting sick to my stomach just thinking about going back up there. What exactly happened? You guys have talked about that accident ever since I can remember, but you never really told me the story. It's because I don't like to think about it, Michelle. We were commercial salmon fishing near Kodiak Island, and our boat sunk. I almost drowned. Dad still has nightmares about it. Yeah. Jack, I shouldn't have pressured you. It's okay. I know this is a bad reason to stay home. If God wants us to go, I shouldn't let fear stop us. I tell you what, let's pray about this and sleep on it. We'll make a decision in the morning. Sounds good. All right. Barb, we have another hour to O'Hare Airport in Chicago. You want to take the wheel for a while? Guess not. Sleeping Beauty. Hello, this is Dave. Dave, this is Carol Bullock. You don't know me, but you sang at our church last week in Colorado. I spoke with my pastor, and he gave me this number to get in touch with you. Well, what can I do for you, Carol? There's something I, I wanted to talk to you about. Remember how during the concert you told us of the trip you were planning to Alaska and Russia? Well, while you were singing, I started imagining you crashing and everyone on board dying. Wow, Carol. I don't know what to say. I didn't want to call and bother you because this seems silly, but I just can't stop thinking about it. I'm not saying these feelings are from God or anything, but I'm worried for you. Carol, thanks for taking the time to call. Let's pray together about this. I'd like that. Father, thank you for Carol and that she cared enough to call me with her concern. You know the current situation. If you want us to go on this trip, please work everything out. We trust you and we put our safety in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening, Dave. I feel better after talking to you. I'm glad you feel better. Thanks for calling, and have a nice night. Did you say something, honey? No, just talking on the phone. Go back to sleep, dear. Get another hour to the airport. We're so glad you joined us for this very first episode of The Brinkman Adventures. 
God reminded the family of an important truth. Having lots of things doesn't make you happy. Things break. Jesus told us to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. And the Brinkmans took this to heart. Want to find out what happens next? Then you won't want to miss part two of Dangerous Waters. Will Jack face his fears and fly over the dreaded Bering Sea with Michelle? Join us next time and find out. While some of the events and characters in today's story are fictitious, the Russian adventure is based on the true story of Dave and Barb Anderson's trip to Lavrencia. If you want to learn more about the true story this episode is based on, visit our website, brinkmanadventures.com. Kids, this is Jack Brinkman. The Bible says that once all the nations on earth have heard about Jesus, he will return. So let's join together in sharing this good news and bring back our King. Our King.